Good evening and welcome to this service of evening prayer on Thursday the 8th of October. I hope that you've all had a good day um, and it's lovely to welcome you this evening. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. A song of God's chosen one. There shall come forth a shoot from the stock of Jesse and a branch shall grow out of his roots and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf, the lion and the fatling together with a little child to lead them. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord, as the waters cover the sea. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise, now and for ever. Amen. This evening we hear the rest of Psalm 78. Tremble, O earth, at the presence of the Lord. How often they rebelled against him in the wilderness and grieved him in the desert. Again and again they tempted God and provoked the Holy One of Israel. They did not remember his power in the day when he redeemed them from the enemy, how he had wrought his signs in Egypt and his wonders in the field of Zoan. He turned their rivers into blood so that they could not drink of their streams. He sent swarms of flies among them which devoured them and frogs which brought them to ruin gave their produce to the caterpillar, the fruit of their toil to the locust. He destroyed their vines with hailstones and their sycamore trees with the frost. He delivered their cattle to hailstones and their flocks to thunderbolts. He let loose on them his blazing anger, fury, displeasure and trouble, a troop of destroying angels. He made a way for his anger and spared not their souls from death, but gave their life over to the pestilence. He smote the firstborn of Egypt, the firstfruits of their strength in the tents of Ham. But he led out his people like sheep, and guided them in the wilderness like a flock. He led them to safety, and they were not afraid, but the sea overwhelmed their enemies. He brought them to his holy place, the mountain which his, which his right hand took in possession. He drove out the nations before them and shared out to them their inheritance. He settled the tribes of Israel in their tents. Yet still they tested God most high and rebelled against him and would not keep his commandments. They turned back and fell away like their forebears, starting aside like an unstrung bow. They grieved him with their hill altars and provoked him to displeasure with their idols. God heard and was greatly angered and utterly rejected Israel. He forsook the tabernacle at Shiloh, the tent of his presence on earth. He gave the ark of his strength into captivity, his splendour into the adversary's hand. He delivered his people to the sword and raged against his inheritance. The fire consumed their young men. There was no one to lament their maidens. Their priests fell by the sword, and their widows made no lamentation. Then the Lord woke as out of sleep, like a warrior who had been overcome with wine. He struck his enemies from behind and put them to perpetual shame. He rejected the tent of Joseph and chose not the tribe of Ephraim, but he chose the tribe of Judah and the hill of Zion, which he loved. 
And there he built his sanctuary like the heights of heaven, like the earth which he founded for ever. He chose David also his servant and took him away from the sheepfolds. From following the ewes with their lambs he took them, that he might shepherd Jacob his people and Israel his inheritance. So he shepherded them with a devoted heart and with skilful hands he guided them. Tremble, O earth, at the presence of the Lord. God, our shepherd, in all our wanderings and temptations, teach us to rest in your mercy and trust in your defence through him who laid down his life for us, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. With 72 verses in that psalm, it's easy to see why it's split over two um, sessions, although I have to say the names in that are a lot easier than some we've had in our readings and some that we have coming up in our reading this evening. And so we continue our readings from 1 Maccabees, chapter 2, verses 1 to 28. In those days, Mattathias, son of John, son of Simeon, a priest of the family of Jorib, moved from Jerusalem and settled in Modin. He had five sons, John surnamed Gadai, Simon called Bassai, Judas called Maccabeus, Eliezer called Averon, and Jonathan called Apphus. He saw the blasphemies being committed in Judah and Jerusalem and said, Alas, why was I born to see this, the ruin of my people, the ruin of the holy city, and to live there where it was given over to the enemy, the sanctuary given over to aliens. Her temple has become like a person without honour. Her glorious vessels have been carried into exile. Her infants have been killed in her streets, her youths by the sword of the foe. What nation has not inherited her palaces and has not seized her spoils? All her adornment has been taken away and no longer free, she has become a slave. And see, our holy place, our beauty and our glory have been laid waste. The Gentiles have profaned them. Why should we live any longer? Then Mattathias and his sons tore their clothes, put on sackcloth and mourned greatly. The king's officers who were enforcing the apostasy came to the town of Modin to make them offer sacrifice. Many from Israel came to them, and Mattathias and his sons were assembled. Then the king's officers spoke to Mattathias as follows. You are a leader, honoured and great in this town, and supported by sons and brothers. Now be the first to come and do what the king commands, as all the Gentiles and the people of Judah and those that are left in Jerusalem have done. Then you and your sons will be numbered among the friends of the king, and you and your sons will be honoured with silver and gold and many gifts. But Mattathias answered and said in a loud voice, Even if all the nations that live under the rule of the king obey him, and have chosen to obey his commandments, every one of them abandoning the religion of their ancestors, I and my sons and my brothers will continue to live by the covenant of our ancestors. Far be it from us to desert the law and the ordinances. We will not obey the king's words by turning aside from our religion to the right hand or to the left. When he had finished speaking these words, a Jew came forward in the sight of all to offer sacrifice on the altar of Modin, according to the Lord's command. When Mattathias saw it, he burned with seal and his heart was stirred. He gave vent to righteous anger. He ran and killed him on the altar. At the same time, he killed the king's officer who was forcing them to sacrifice and he tore down the altar. Thus he burned with seal for the Lord, just as Phineas had against Zimri, son of Salu. Then Mattathias cried out in the town with a loud voice saying, let everyone who is zealous for the law and supports the covenant come out with me. Then he and his sons fled to the hills and left all that they had in the town. Here ends our first reading. The Canticle Great and Wonderful 
All nations shall come and worship you, O Christ, and share in the feast of your kingdom. Great and wonderful are your deeds, Lord God the Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O ruler of the nations. You shall not revere and praise your name, O Lord, for you alone are holy. All nations shall come and worship in your presence, for your just dealings have been revealed. To the one who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honour and glory and might for ever and ever. Amen. All nations shall come and worship you, O Christ, and share in the feast of your kingdom. Our second reading is taken from St Mark's Gospel, chapter 14, verses 43 to 52. Immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, and with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under God. So when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled. A certain young man was following him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. Here ends our second reading. The Magnificat You have filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him, from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm, and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones, and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. You have filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. So let us pray. Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for all that we have done, the work we have undertaken in your name, the people we have spoken to, the rest and relaxation we may have enjoyed. As we are reminded in our readings this evening, sometimes it is not always easy to stand up and be counted as a Christian, to be a follower of you. We pray that you give us strength, that you help us to display our faith in the words that we speak and the actions that we take and the example that we give to others. Even in these restricted times, we pray that you show us the way of making your love known to all those around us. As we pray for our world today, we pray for your church throughout the world, the body of Christ here on earth. We pray for its example in places where it provides sanctuary and help, guidance and strength, for the work that the church does throughout the world, in providing help for the needy and the poor. We pray for those people who minister in those places, for those who have 
very difficult situations around them. We pray for those churches that are unable to open, for those people that are unable to gather for worship or know that people are praying for them. Lord, we give you thanks for the opportunities that we have to make our prayers to you, to hear the words of scripture and to gather together virtually as well as those times when we can do so in person. Lord, we pray for an end to this pandemic across our world. We pray for an end to the suffering it is causing, for the devastation it is bringing to people's lives, for those who are unwell from it, those who've lost their loved ones, for those who've lost their businesses and employment, those who feel that they've lost so much. We pray especially for our prayer intention today, for all who feel lonely, isolated or anxious because of the pandemic. We pray especially for those who are isolated from loved ones, grandparents who long to see a grandchild, for those worried about elderly parents and relatives, and for families who feel under great pressure. Lord, we know that even the most laid-back people have anxieties and fears. We pray that we are able to lay them before you today, that you would bring us peace in our hearts and minds, that you would guide us where we feel fearful, that you would calm us when we feel anxious, that we would be able to rest and know your presence. We pray for those that we miss, for those we miss seeing day by day, those from our families and friends, for those in our communities and the places where we would usually meet so many others. We pray for schools and places of education, especially those places facing great outbreaks of this virus. We pray for our young people for those who are in school and those who are having to isolate at home. We pray for those who teach and we pray especially for those whose responsibility it is to keep our young people safe and to make those decisions. We pray for our key workers, for those who go out to work and those able to work from home. We pray for those who continue to be furloughed, for those who still have not been able to return to work and for those, as we say, who have lost their employment at this time. Lord, we pray for our health service in its many different roles and responsibilities, in its care for those in need, for those who bring healing and wholeness. We pray for our hospitals and hospices, for our care homes, sheltered housing, and for those who work out in the community. We pray for our GP surgeries, health centres and pharmacies, and for all those who work in that healing sector. And so we bring to you, Lord, those we carry in our hearts and minds today, those who are in need of your healing touch, those who suffer in body, mind or spirit, and those who have asked us to pray for them. We pray for Charlie, Wendy, Lisa, David, Morris, Margaret, Mary, Jeff, Alan, George, Chris, Charlotte, Gillian, Jean, John, Marion, Jim, and Elaine. Lord, you know the needs of your people. You know them before we speak them, before we even know them ourselves. We pray, Lord, that you would be with those in need today. We pray especially for those who have been bereaved, for those who've lost their loved ones those who've lost them to this virus, 
and those who have died recently. We pray for those who've died this past day. Help us to remember that the numbers we see are people with families and friends behind them. Help their stories not to be lost in the statistics we see. We pray also for those whose anniversaries occur at this time. And Lord, we pray that you give your comfort and strength to all those who mourn. Almighty God, you have made us for yourself and our hearts are restless till they find their rest in you. Pour your love into our hearts and draw us to yourself. And so bring us at last to your heavenly city, where we shall see you face to face, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you very much for joining me for this service of evening prayer. It's been lovely to have your company as always. There'll be no live stream services tomorrow, um, but we will be back again on Saturday morning to pray together. In the meantime, I do hope that you have a peaceful evening, that you stay safe, look after yourselves and take care, and you remain as always in my prayers. Do take care.